Having recently finished reading through all the Harry Potter books, I decided to look at some of the video games. At first it was merely to see which one would be odd, janky, or weird enough to stream or maybe shelve it for an episode of Scanlines, but it turned out into a weird rabbit hole that led me to five versions of a Harry Potter game. This is a true story. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was a video game for almost every film that came out. From Space Jam to Beetlejuice, they seemed to have sprung out of the ground every time a movie just came out. Most of these games were terrible, some were okay, and it eventually led to the joke where if one of these games was good, it was weird because it was a movie spin-off game. For Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, there are five distinct versions of this movie as a video game and it was released over a span of three years. There's a Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and finally, a Windows version. Five distinct versions of the very first Harry Potter film. They do share some similarities such as assets or story progression, but besides that, they're pretty unique. This intrigued me so much because on a wiki site like giantbomb.com, it lists only one entry for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone despite the games being so wildly different. It made me think that if this game only had one listing, what other games are hiding different versions out there? Even after writing most of this video and doing most of the research, I'm sure there's something I missed, but I had to record this audio for Jake or else he'll kill me. So if there's anything huge I missed, I'll get back to it in a part two or something, but for now, let's jump in game by game. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for Windows PC. Developed by No Wonder and published by Electronic Arts, released November 15th, 2001. This game holds up the most because you can still play it on Windows 10. There's even a fan patch to help it run smoother. The textures are still a bit ugly, but they're sharp. The game starts with a brief overview of events leading up to Harry's arrival at Hogwarts, and then we're off. Dumbledore, voiced by a guy who remembers he's supposed to sound old at the beginning of every sentence, tells us to explore the entire castle and not to be late for class. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The 3D model for his glasses is just... bad? It's like a weird visor from Star Trek? Okay, so next we head to class, we learn some spells, and then we do some puzzle rooms. This is a common thing we'll find in most of these games. Class, spell, puzzle room. After learning the first spell, Flipendo, Harry doesn't stop saying it. In the world of Harry Potter, you gotta say the spell most of the time, and this game stays true to that. I played the first bit of Harry's adventure on PC, and I can tell you that only part of it really sets it aside is learning the spells. You have to trace the spell shape with the mouse a la Mario Party minigame, and the better you do, the more points for Gryffindor you get. So that's good. It's also notable that most of the character models seem to resemble, at least somewhat, the actors from the movies. Makes me wonder if they had access to pre-production material from Warner Brothers. With the Windows version as our baseline, let's move on. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for PlayStation. Developed by Argonaut and published by Electronic Arts. Released November 15th, 2001. So far so good, except the intro photos are the same as the Windows version, but with color. If anything, I would have figured the PC version would be able to handle the full brilliance of these renderings, but I guess they saved them for the PlayStation? Harry arrives at Hogwarts once again, and we're greeted by Headmaster Dumbledore, whose glasses look a heck of a lot better than the Windows version. While the beginning has been quite similar, this is where it diverges. Instead of going straight to class, we head up to Gryffindor Tower, meet Fred and George, and then we discover Draco has stolen Hedwig? That's not even in the book. Now we learn how to climb and jump, how to cast Flipendo knockback jinx, Flipendo! And uh, Puzzle Room, and Nearly Headless Nick, whose voice seems to be sped up by like 8,000%. Well, you've made it this far, now take a look at this. I actually played a lot of this game when I was recording the footage because it just wasn't that bad until I had to do a dumb boss fight with Draco and I had to toss crackers back at him, like the ones that go pop, not like the bread ones. Also, this wouldn't be a visit to Hogwarts without Hagrid. Hello, Harry, it's me, Hagrid. Oh God, Hagrid. 
Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for Game Boy Advance, developed by Grip Tonight Games and published by Electronic Arts, released November 15th, 2001. Hey, did you want to see the pixelated versions of those intro screens from the PC and the PS1 versions? No? Well, too bad, they're here. They seem like another thing all these developers received when Amaze Entertainment, the uh, kind of conglomerate that had all these teams underneath them, told them to make these games. This game also really reminds me of a Scooby-Doo game I had for the Game Boy Advance when I was a kid. It was like weird and 3D, but anyways. Harry once again starts at Hogwarts, although there's no speech from Dumbledore this time, so he just heads off to defense against the Dark Arts class. Once again, we see the pattern of Learn Spell, Puzzle Room. Thankfully, this game is a cool mini-game. It's like Dance Dance Revolution, but with the buttons on the Game Boy. I like this bit. There's not much else to see here. Uh, the levels are kind of confusing. But other than that, it's 2D and it's a worse version than the other ones. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for the Game Boy Color. Developed by Grip Tonight Games and published by Electronic Arts. Guess when it was released? November 15th, 2001. This game is so different. It's crazy to me that it's even the same developer as the Game Boy Advance version. It's so different. It's like a Pokemon and Final Fantasy game had a baby with Harry Potter. It doesn't have the same intro. In fact, it starts with a letter from good old Dumbledore and fades into Harry with Hagrid and Diagon Alley. We didn't even skip everything straight to Hogwarts. Besides it being a 2D pixel art game, it doesn't even resemble the movies at all like the other games do. It was released after the film, but as far as any sort of references or similarities, there's none. This is in very stark contrast to the 3D games, which at most resemble actors who portrayed the characters with some glaring problems for characters who weren't even in the first Harry Potter film. For example, Professor Sprout in the PS1 version is a skinny red-headed professor, since she didn't make an appearance until Chamber of Secrets movie in 2002. Anyways, we get our wand from Ollivander, meet Hagrid at Gringotts, and then we walk around the vaults. And there's not even the cool cart or anything. It's just... I, I don't know what to say. It's just so different. I'm surprised they didn't even try to match. The movies, they did so much... They didn't even take the Game Boy Advance game and make it dumber. They made a whole new game. It's crazy to me. From some of my research, I found out that this game resembles the books the most closely. They have, like, almost every scene, which, again is crazy. Uh, I think I might keep playing this game. It's really not bad. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. Developed by Warthog and published by Electronic Arts. Released December 9th, 2003. While it feels quite like an afterthought, the bit I played of this version is the best looking and smoothest experience. Maybe that's because it came out a full two years after the others, or maybe because it's the same engine, map, and game as the Chamber of Secrets game that came out the same year, from the same developer, and hid the collectibles in the same place. I can only assume Warthog got the license to make Chamber of Secrets, and then realized with a little more effort they could squeeze out two games for the price of one. It's not bad, but I just remember Chamber of Secrets being better. It was one of the first Xbox games I ever had, and I played it a lot. You had to pull like gnomes out of the Weasley's Garden, it was, it was awful. One final note before I wrap up this whole thing, the music is actually pretty good. It was written by Jeremy Soule before the movie was scored by John Williams, and it's wholly original. It does a great job at setting the magical tone of Harry Potter, and it could easily have passed for the film score if John Williams hadn't knocked it out of the friggin' park. Well, that was my journey through the five versions of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't know why I did it, but I did it, and I made a video about it. So don't complain. Maybe I'll do the next game next. Oh no, that would be terrible. Hey, you caught me pretending to take a poop. If you liked our video, you should like, comment, and subscribe on it. That way, YouTube knows we're awesome. Do it. I gotta wipe.